Hello, this is Tom Carhill, um, just filling in a gap in a video little chain that I have made um, about three days ago, um, and I inadvertently cut one of the recordings down, so about 15 minutes it's missing. It's a narration um, with an introduction of um, an article written by SOTT.net, and it's about Thomas Sheridan, um, and it's by Joe Quinn, with two N's on the end, and Niall. N I A L L Bradley. So that's Joe Quinn and Niall Bradley, and this was published on the on Sunday, the 19th of August, 2012. So I'm just filling in the gap. Um, this bit's missing. From internet troll to psychopathy expert, the con artistry of Thomas Sheridan. Compared to say 10 years ago, a lot of people today are aware of and talking about psychopaths. On the one hand, this is encouraging, but on the other hand. On the other, it's a little troubling. It is heartening to see awareness of psychopathy breach the mainstream frequency fence here and there, but the signal-to-noise ratio, as with all knowledge relevant to the growth and survival of decent human beings, remains high on the noise side. We see ridiculous studies in the news portraying psychopaths as curable, and that was a link, portraying psychopaths as curable, and links making the rounds about how not having a Facebook account, emphasis on not, may indicate that someone is a psychopath. We've also seen Twitter being touted as a tool for spotting psychopaths. And just today, news that the US justice system is considering acceptance of biological evidence that someone is a genetic psychopath in court with a view to use using it to mitigate the sentences of criminal offenders, mitigate being to lessen. So that's, that's a very worrying development. The reasoning being that psychopaths can't help being psychopaths, that they lack free will, and therefore they bear diminished responsibility for their crimes. And then it's got a picture, Thomas Sheridan, New Age grifter, internet troll, and con artist. I don't believe, having read this before, um, I don't believe there's any evidence about it being an internet troll that they really put up. There's some quite amusing things that he said that would... Yeah, they don't look good, but, but I don't really think a troll. But maybe, maybe there is. Maybe they just didn't put them up. Well, yeah, that's exactly why they need to be held under lock and key permanently. Perhaps we shouldn't be so surprised that the burgeoning awareness of psychopathy has been vectored away from the truth of the matter in this way. This is an information war after all. So if the psychopaths in positions of power gauge that the psychopath awareness train has left the station, they will naturally be working round the clock to load it with nuclear capabilities in the hope of derailing it or at least sending it down the wrong track. The name of their game is to misinform people, or I'd say disinform people, about what psychopaths are really like by trivialising and obscuring the issue. Hence, the proliferation of junk science that claims psychopaths can be cured, that psychopathic, psychopathology is a harmless evolutionary adaptation, or that psychopaths can be spotted based on analysis of their Twitter feed and Facebook page or lack thereof. A case in point is an author who has written a couple of books on the issue. When Irish artist Thomas Sheridan published Puzzling People, The Labyrinth of Psy the Psychopath in 2011, that's Puzzling People, The Labyrinth of the Psychopath in 2011, we initially felt that, overall, Sheridan had done a decent job of synthesising the available information on psychopathy, which is largely walled in by academic jargon and put it together for a wider audience. Four of his five core characteristics of a psychopath were, psychopath were sound, except for high testosterone. There is no correlation, no correlation between psychopathy and baseline testosterone, but we had reservations about some of the secondary characteristics he listed as markers for psychopathy and worried that they tended towards spotting the psychopath based on visual cues, such as being able to read the condition in somebody's eyes, in someone's eyes, sorry. Those of you who've read Dr. Robert Hare's Without Conscience will remember that the best psychotherapists are fooled from time to time even when they practically have a clipboard in front of them with a patient's history that is stamped probable psychopath. Yet here was Thomas Sheridan, a new author on psychopathology, stating with, absolutely cer with absolute certainty in a book that provided no citations that, and this is a quote, 
When one becomes skilled in recognising these traits and pathologies, psychopath spotting becomes relatively straightforward. Page 10. Now that is an absolutely fucking outrageous statement. It's nothing um, you know, straightforward at all, because that's why they... Yeah, well, it's nonsense. Really, that certainly hasn't been our experience. Sheridan also claimed in Puzzling People that, quotes, all psychopaths get it in the end. Page 108. Not only is this not true, it must run counter to reality given that the vast majority of people are totally unaware of their existence. At least, they are limited to an awareness of psychopaths as mass murdering sadists whose numbers are tiny relative to the psychopathic population as a whole. I'd say that's a fair assessment. Our research actually puts their numbers at around 6% of the global population. And that may even be conservative. I might as well just say here that that bit there, all this stuff about there being fucking loads of them, it, it's obviously bollocks because it waters the whole thing down. So I'm a bit suspicious of this bit because the whole thing is it's like if all these people are psychopaths, then it's pretty much a normal a normal state of affairs, isn't it? You can't really say it's exceptional if 6% of people are. I mean, that's more than 1 in 20. That's fucking loads of people. And if it ran in families, then, you know... Anyway, sorry. Our research actually puts the number at around 6% of the global population, and that may even be conservative. So the overwhelming majority of the planet's 420 million psychopaths live from cradle to grave undetected, leaving a swathe of emotional, social and financial destruction in their path. This is to say nothing of the massive destruction wrought by the action of psychopaths in positions of power in government and corporations who almost invariably get away with mass murder. Much of Sheridan's puzzling people read like it would not have been out of place in a Cassiopeia forum. That's capital C, A S S I O P A E A. So, despite our reservations about some of Sheridan's claims, we nevertheless, nevertheless endorsed his book and encouraged S O T T readers, family members, and friends to pick up a copy. From correspondence with the author, we learned that he had been a big fan of our work for several years. He has also been a member of our forum since 2009. When he introduced himself as Transsociopathica Demonic Sociopath Entity Disorder, himself as, right, right, Where Puzzling People was a compilation of the research and insights of others, Sheridan's second book, Defeated Demons, Freedom from Consciousness, Parasites in Psychopathic Society, is enriched with its own original material. The long and the short of it is that Defeated Demons is not even wrong. Now, I don't even know what that means, because they put original in quotes, and then they put not even wrong in quotes. I, I just don't even know what the fuck that means. But anyway, I'm just reading it as it is. In a second, in a section called The self Ray's Predator, page 24, Sheridan proclaims that the fact that psychopaths are born into this world is, in quotations, propaganda by the pathologically driven, genetics obsessed, elitist faction that psychopathy is, in quotes, all in the genes, dot dot dot, a myth peddled by prescription happy psychiatrists, dot dot dot, and creating enormous anxiety anxiety among ordinary people, end of quote. Raising the issue of psychopaths in power, abusing research into genetic psychopathy, is one thing. Throwing the baby out with the bathwater by stating that there is no genetic component to psychopathy is something else altogether. Whether or not Sheridan realised it, by doing so he discarded the core problem of psychopathy altogether. By definition, psychopaths are born, not made. According to all of the psychiatrists and psychologists that have spent years researching the topic, and psychopaths themselves, psychopathy is not an acquired mental illness that can be fixed. If there's no genetic component to psychopathic, to the psychopathic spectrum, and they're not born, then where does Sheridan think they come from? His answer is as surprising as it is ignorant. On the other hand, there is plenty of research which shows the reverse to be true, that psychopaths just seemingly arrive out of nowhere as a kind of predatory savant, 
in amongst a family of perfectly compassionate and normal individuals. Dot dot dot. We make we make the brain we need in life. End of quotes. Defeated Demons, page 45 to 47. I don't see how that um, quote, three lines, not even two and a half lines has lasted like more than three pages. Doesn't make sense. But anyway, that's what, 45 to 47. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe, yes, yeah, so the dot, dot, dots explains that. Sorry. Another quote. Just seemingly arrive out of nowhere. End of quote. Is that meant to be a serious argument? Psychopaths just appear. Kind of like the Big Bang, or God maybe, Sheridan rightfully decries the corruption of science and the exclusion of consciousness from the study of cognitive science, but in attempting to fill in the gaps, he makes fatal errors by applying neuroplasticity and the developmental potential of normal people to the case of psychopaths. Psychopaths are hardwired to embody the predatory savant, meaning that their predatory consciousness fits their genetic blueprint. Neuroplasticity does not apply to psychopaths. The psychopathic brain is the result of evolutionary adaptations in the genetics of psychopaths. An individual psychopath, him, herself, does not make the brain it needs, in quotations that was, through, in quotations, specific choices and adapt adaptations. As Sheridan puts it, beware of anyone with absolute certainty that psychopaths can be spotted. Pathological symptoms and behaviours can be seen and called out for what they are, but they may yet be the learned strategies of a normal person who has been induced into behaving, or believing that it is the only way to survive growing up in a pathological world. We cannot emphasize enough that some of the most pathological people we have come across have the most normal mask of sanity you can conceive of. They don't physically hurt anybody, they don't look at you funny, they barely even raise their voice in anger. Some of them even excel in particular fields and are, to all appearances, well-adjusted, upstanding citizens. What most often catches them out in the end is an otherwise mundane incident that blows up into a big drama as a result of their wholly inappropriate reaction. They simply can't maintain their mask for an indefinite amount of time. But in, in yeah, indefinite. But even then, when pathology is staring you in the face, it is oh so easy to make excuses for them and, in quotes, fill in the blanks. In short, surefire diagnoses are risky, and it takes careful networking with others and combined recapit recapitulation of years of observa observation to come up with any tentative diagnosis and a suitable course of action for protecting the self and others from any apparent psychopath. To say Sheridan's book books are loose with facts, the second one in particular, would be an understatement, with hardly any references to sources cited, defeated demons consist of subjective statements made one after the other and offered with little or no basis in fact. They are, therefore, often totally unhinged from reality and as a result of little use to anyone sincerely interested in understanding what psychopaths are and how they manipulate. In fact, such subjective and ill-informed pronouncements are a danger to anyone attempting to understand this most important of topics. Wrong data is worse than no data at all. <coughs> like the above forementioned nonsense about using social media platforms as tools for singling out psychopaths, Sheridan's criteria for spotting psychopaths are often superficial and glib including his assertion that psychopaths can be spotted by their eccentric music collections, in quotes. A genuine psychopath will have the most bizarre music collections, everything from Doris Day to death metal, where will be, there will be no consistency based on actual emotional style. To the psychopath, it, music, sick, merely serves as potential props to manipulate others' bespoke tastes for the, their bespoke personas. Defeated Demons, page 96. Sheridan has also claimed that psychopaths can be identified by a ring finger being longer than an index finger, <laughs> a receding hairline, <laughs> heavy growth of facial and body hair, acne and high cheekbones with a low brow ridge. The low brow ridge is an actual fact because of the undeveloped frontal lobe, the psychopathic sloping, um, you know, 
frontal part of her head there, like Tony Blair. This is precisely the kind of deluded racist eugenicist approach taken by the Nazis. What's wrong with Nazis? And the modern day ruling elite. Strangely enough, as noted above, in his second book, Sheridan rails against the idea that it is all in the genes, as propaganda by the pathologically driven, genetics obsessed elitist faction. In May of this year, a thread was opened on our forum by members discussing Sheridan's odd stance against genetic psychopathy described in Defeated Demons as well as the vehemence, vehemence against the UFO phenomenon and challenging that he was beginning to voice on radio interviews and posts to his Facebook page where he described himself and this is yeah this is a punk punk rock psychologist what a complete wanker above all it was the absolute certainty in Sheridan's writing that raised eyebrows Sheridan's vitriolic stance against channeling as work of the devil is particularly interesting. There are numerous instances in history of science where the great minds we eulogise today made discovery, discoveries via unorthodox inspiration. Think of the discovery of the benzene ring. You won't see this mentioned in Wikipedia, but Frederick Kekul, K-E-K-U-L-E, -E, chanced upon this important discovery. It, this important discovery, thanks to serendipitous. Intervention of intervention of a dream. The extraordinary Hindu Raman Ujan, one of the world's greatest mathematicians, lived at the turn of the 20th century. He was entirely self-taught and pronounced an enormous amount of work that was inspired that inspired that has inspired a vast amount of further research and is still being plumbed for its secrets today. Before dying at the tender age of 32, Raman. Raman Ujan claimed that he received his ideas through dreams in which complex equations were channeled to him by godness, goddess, by a goddess. Ramajan credits his acumen to his family goddess Namagiri of Namakal. He looked to her for inspiration in his work and claimed to dream of blood drops that symbolized her male consort Nala Simha after which he would receive visions of scrolls of complex mathematical content unfolding before his eyes. He often said, an equation for me has no meaning unless it represents a thought of God. That was off Wikipedia. Right, now there's a bit more about this Raman Anjan, but I'm just going to leave that because it's... Yeah, anyway, right, so we'll get back to Sheridan here. Sounds like an interesting guy, though. Sheridan's particular beef with beef with channeled material is reminiscent of <laughs> Stuart Swerdlow's assertion that any channeled, informa channeled information is crap, it is 100% disinformation. Now, if you've come across Swerdlow, it's a fucking hilarious, <laughs> lying, fucking crazy man. So what, I, I don't even know why they're mentioning him. I, I would never put Thomas Sheridan, like, you know, as low down on my list of <laughs> fucking nonsense as him. He's not in the same category. He's, he's, in, a, he's in a class of his own as Swerdlow. Swerdlow is a self-styled metaphysical world leader <laughs> who claims to have spent 13 years part, as part of the Montauk Project, a series of US military mind control experiments. Think the men who stare at goats. Arkad is us. Jack is response to Swerdlow's ignorant stance here. It is well known, it is well worth reading as much of it is applicable to our current analysis of Sheridan and his work. No, no, no. Apparently, incensed at what our Facebook, our network of readers was piecing together about Sheridan's contradictory beliefs, questionable past behaviour and lewd suggestions on his Facebook page, Sheridan brought out the tired old cult of an accusation against SOTT.net and launched into a three-day expletive-laden rant against us through his Facebook page. Here are a few examples. Thomas Sheridan, this is off his Facebook page, this is... Reading the message board reminds me of a time I once saw two homeless people having sex on an old mattress in New York in a New York back alley. It was funny, sad, disgusting, and strangely compelling at the same time. Sheridan referring to the CAS, that CASS forum, or to his devotees on Facebook. Another one. Fuck off, Humberto, and stop polluting my wall with this crazy cult shit. Do something useful like get a pizza and a beer. Get me a pizza and beer. This woman does nothing but add 
hominin attacks when ad hominin attacks when you read that board get your head you get you head out of your ass just go and fucking leave or stay and become a fucking man yeah i think that's a bit of gratuitous word use of the word fuck there it doesn't sort of roll off quite right did it thomas sheridan replied to someone who asked him to be more reasonable about SOTT.net. Apparently, if you say on Sheridan's Facebook page, <laughs> if you stay on <laughs> Sheridan's Facebook page, you'll become a fucking man. Any takers. Thomas Sheridan. I declare war on the Cassopians. That's that Cassopia. C A S S O P I A N S. Come and get me, bitches. Now, again, it's sort of childish because he's a grown man. They shouldn't be speaking like that, should he? Thomas Sheridan declaring war on Cass.org because Cass 4 members question some aspects of his book. Thomas Sheridan. I predict that I will go down and the one person she should have never picked on, as the one person she should never have picked on. No, it said, and the one person picked on you. Yeah. I am from the ghetto. I have survived UFV car bombs and lived on the streets of New York. I am not some poncy new age head who can't fight. They are playing a whole new league now, dot, dot, dot. Thomas Sheridan referring to Laura and exhibiting the typical psychopathic trait of grandiosity. That's quite funny. This last image is rather funny in that Sheridan tries to promote himself as living in the ghetto, the north side of Dublin, Ireland, and having survived car bombs. He unfortunately misspells the acronym UVF as UFV. <laughs> Here, he is referring to a car bomb in Dublin, Dublin in 1974 by the, the um, UVF, the Ulster Volunteer Force. Um, that's pro-British... Um, Anyway, that killed 26 people, but apparently not Thomas Sheridan, because as an 8-year-old boy at the time, he was probably sitting in his house miles away. This is a typical trait of a psychopath, where they will always place themselves at the centre of dramatic events in order to impress people and thereby more easily manipulate them. We will allow for the fact, however, that Sheridan may have lived on the streets of New York, although it was most likely to have been in a cardboard box and not in a Wall Street bank, as he likes to claim. As an aside, this is the common modus operandi of people who have spontaneously decided to attack our work. So it's nothing new for us, and we don't generally pass comment on it publicly. We have covered this ground time and time again, so if you are unaware of the background to cult accusations made against us, I don't know what that means, and would like to get up to speed, you can vi visit Cassiopeia hyphen cult dot com that's c a s s i o p a e a hyphen that are minus c u l t dot com where you'll find detailed chronological accounts and documents and testimonies it's interesting that sheridan has had a number of blogs and websites in the past only one of which appears to remain live one of his main websites was apparently removed in the last few days sheridan also set up his own forum psychopath free ostensibly as a venue for helping victims of psychopaths. He also appears to have removed his Facebook page, but not before bragging about having a separate fake Facebook profile under the pseudonym of Fontaine Excelsior de Blanchard III, right with sexual innuendo and sexist slurs. Sheridan apparently held court there until summer 2011 for a harem of female worshippers. Meanwhile, he appears to have used his real Facebook page to attract victims of psychopaths, again, predominantly female. In quotes, I am going to reach millions of people with my work. The whole world is waiting for me. Thomas Sheridan's Facebook page. We had been hoping against hope that Sheridan would come round and really grok psychopathy, psychopathology. But his recent behaviour, coupled with information sent to us anonymously about his checkered past, has left us with little choice but to share our findings with the public. We wonder how, if Sheridan were to use his own criteria for spotting a psychopath, he might diagnose someone writing this kind of trash on public forums. This is him again, apparently, allegedly. I am sexy, good-looking, talented and creative, beautiful, gifted, Irish Catholic by baptism. He spelled ca Catholic with a small c. Catholic boy with a big acrobatic dick and a heart of gold. 
I will not repeat in capitals colons in capitals will not say sorry for this <laughs> this is me this is my life and that's that <laughs> one of many similar posts by Thomas Sheridan um, KFUZZ box at T-I-N-E-T dot I-E so that's kfuzzbox at T in it dot ie on a google groups board see this link for an it under the link for the full extent of sheridan's pathology and here's the counselor of victims of psychopaths a majority of whom are women holding forth on women the first thing i think about when i see a woman is fucking her i admire the woman as much for vagina and tit as i do for her brain if not more i love putting my dick inside a woman liberated or not my knob can't tell the difference i have decided that my cock has more credibility than my brain and is therefore more worthy of respect you often hear the expression think with your mind and not with your dick well i think it's a pile of protestant rubbish and I'm a Catholic, so to hell with that. My New Year's resolution is to only think with my cock and ignore my mind. No, I think that's I think that's hilarious. Right, but anyway, there's another one down here. Um, oh no, 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 where we? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I've got loads of women waiting in the wings. It's an endless supply of babes in Unky World. U N K I W R R O L D with a capital U. And besides, they always come back to me in the end. Boston Cates need me to care for her so she doesn't fall in with the wrong crowd and get pregnant or start taking drugs. She's a good kid and all she needs is love and understanding and my hand up her skirt. Right, so that's basically Thomas Sheridan. Um, I've done more of these. Hopefully, you'll be able to stay and listen to the other ones.